Hi everybody, so this is part two of the engine swap video. Uh, we took this engine out of a 2003 Mini Cooper S. It has a uh, thrown connecting rod. So we're replacing the entire short block with a brand new one that we got from a, a BMW slash Mini. Today we'll take all the old parts off of the engine and uh, uh, check to see what it looks like on the inside and start moving the parts over to the new engine. First, I'll go ahead and get off the old clutch, pressure plate, and flywheel. So that's 85,000 miles. It looks like this clutch was getting pretty close to needing to be replaced anyway. It probably had about, oh, I don't know, 20,000 miles left on it. All right, next I'll take off the crankcase pull, the crankshaft pulley here. And the way I do this is with a uh, steering wheel puller type of a tool. This goes in like that. There's a couple of really small threaded, threaded uh, holes here. I believe this is a six millimeter hole. And these are about 40 millimeters long, the bolts. If I use it just like it is, this uh, center bolt will actually press on the crankshaft itself. So what I do is I got some old head bolts that I cut off. So I cut them up to different lengths, stick them into the hole here, and that way it'll the tool will press on the bolt instead of the pulley. I'm going to keep an eye on the tool here to make sure I'm not bottoming out in the pulley. If I do that, it'll snap off these bolts. And this goes in clockwise, of course. There we go. It looks like this car might have had a front main seal leak, so good thing we're changing this. Next, we'll remove this uh, tensioner assembly. <coughs> and we'll remove the idler pulley. <coughs> then I'll remove all of these 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter bolts, which are holding the timing chain cover in place and then there's one torx up here at the top. The torx is a size T30. And don't forget the bolt in the center which is actually slightly longer than the other ones. Now we can go ahead and tap the cover off. Looks like the timing chain and the timing chain rails and everything is in good condition so uh, we won't need to replace any of that. On the back side here this is the oil pump right here. Uh, if you've ever had a situation where the um, ch chain tensioner went bad and the chain was able to uh, run loose, sometimes it'll, it'll contact on the bottom on this chain guide at the bottom of the oil pump. It will break this and this will end up in, in the oil pump oil sump and then uh, typically this uh, front side guide rail here will be broken as well and all these nylon pieces end up in the sump but this car looks like everything's in good shape so we won't be needing to replace all that stuff. Next I'll go ahead and get the uh, oil filter and uh, heat exchange assembly off. It's just three 13 millimeter bolts. Super easy. All right, next we'll take off the cylinder head. And to do that, I'll need to remove either the entire intake manifold or these uh, horns here. So we've got a new gasket. So I think what I'll probably do is, yeah, go ahead and uh, remove uh, the intake manifold completely. First, I'll remove the <coughs> fuel injector rail to get it out of the way. A universal joint works good where the straight extension doesn't fit. We'll get this out of the way also. Next I'll remove the valve cover.
Okay, so the top of the engine looks good too. I don't see any wear so far. I think what I'll do is uh, put this thing at top dead center if, if I can do so. I don't know if the bottom of the engine can rotate, but I hope it can. Get this crank sensor out of the way. All right, so we got everything lined up. The way it works on a Mini Cooper engine for the Generation 1 is uh, there's actually no timing marks on the timing chain cover or on the crankshaft pulley. There's a couple of uh, arrows on each of the sprockets which match up with two gold links on the chain. So there's one that matches on the top, two that match on the bottom. And it might take a good 20 or 30 revolutions of the engine before it lines up. But when they are lined up, you know that the engine is in time. I got this fancy toolkit here. Basically, we slide into the two holes here. This lines up here like that, and it allows you to loosen up the crankshaft sprocket. And before I forget, I also need to loosen up the timing chain tensioner. Uh, 19 millimeter bolt right here. We've already got the oil exchange off, so this should be pretty easy to get off. So that's the chain tensioner. The way this works is oil goes into the back of it uh, and pressurizes it, and this pops out and pushes on the chain to keep it from slopping around. If you ever hear a timing chain death rattle, the reason is because this thing, the plunger, is, is stuck in the out position and is flopping around and what you're hearing is, is is that. So now that we have the tension off, I'll finish taking off the camshaft sprocket bolt. Pull off the camshaft sprocket and separate it from the chain here. Kind of tricky to do. There we go. I'll drop it down. Pull it off of the bottom and take the chain on out. And you don't need to be worried about front and back orientation because the gold links are only on the front side of the chain. When you put it back together obviously make sure the gold links are on the outside. Next we need to remove the chain guides and these are behind these plugs which have a 10 millimeter uh, allen key socket. So you need to loosen these plugs up. Behind the plugs there's a couple of 10 millimeter bolts which hold the t guide rails in place. You want to be real careful not to drop these bolts. All right, now we're ready to take off the cylinder head, it looks like. So these are 15 millimeter bolts, and on the inside here, there's a couple of 13s on the very front. You'll want to remove the 13 millimeter bolts first. Next we'll remove each of the cylinder head, cylinder head bolts and we'll start from the outside and going a star pattern and work our way in and I'll do a couple of passes. First I'll just loosen them slightly and then we'll uh, go back and finish loosening them. Loosen about a quarter turn. Go back again and uh, loosen the rest of the way. We're going to re be replacing these bolts with brand new bolts as well. And I'll just pull the cylinder head off. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this. Yeah, it looks fine. I don't see any sign of burn valves. There is water mixed with oil. That's because uh, the water, the oil jacket was compromised on cylinder number one. And here's the engine itself. From the top, it doesn't look that bad. Let me go ahead and take this knock sensor off. <coughs> and then the last two things we need to take off of the old block are the crank position sensor down here. And the water pump inlet. Okay, that's all for the top of the black. Now we'll go ahead and get off this oil pan. And I'm sure we're going to find some nice surprises inside. When I was turning over the engine, I could hear clunking inside. And actually, when I was looking through the hole, I could see that 
for the first cylinder the connecting rod was completely missing it wasn't even attached to the to the crankshaft at all Here's the oil pan full of water. Yuck. And now we can see the damage. Here's all the connecting rod parts. That's the wrist pin there. It's like it's smashed into pieces. Yeah, it broke right in half. There's a wrist pin circlip. There's a piece of the piston. There's the connecting rod right there, and it's actually bent in half. There's the connecting rod bolt. Looks like it's sheared right off. And the last part of the connecting rod bearing. It's completely bent out of shape. And over here is this, the main source of damage. We've got one of the uh, journals here, which is completely missing the connecting rod. I can see the piston down inside there, and it's actually rotated slightly off of, off of the correct orientation. It's hard to say, though, whether this failure was due to uh, a failure of the of the casting of the connecting rod itself, or if it overheated for some some other reason. So here's what's left of the piston. Pretty much the whole bottom half of the piston is is completely gone. So the very last piece I'll take off of this old engine is uh, the sump intake here. And I'll clean this real good because there's little fragments inside of from the broken uh, connecting rod and the piston. And the cylinder wall actually looks not too bad, except for there's a hole uh, in the water jacket on the side at the bottom. So yeah, this block is definitely toast. All right, so I'll put the oil pan on this one. Okay, I got this oil pickup all nice and clean. Next, we'll put in the new oil pan and oil pan gasket. Uh, this engine's getting a new oil pan because the old one, the drain plug threads were all screwed up. We'll go ahead and flip the engine back over and do the rest of the assembly. I don't have a fancy engine lift, so I'm building the engine right here on top of the engine hoist. That way, as the engine gets heavier, as I bolt parts onto it, I'm not going to have difficulty dragging it around. All right, I think we'll turn our attention next to the cylinder head. All right, I'm using a scraper to get all the carbon and goo off of the bottom of the cylinder head, as well as the old gasket material. Remember that aluminum is very soft, so be careful not to gouge it. Next, I'll take a brass wire wheel. Brass is soft enough that it won't scratch the aluminum. And I'll just run this over real gentle to uh, uh, get rid of any remaining uh, stuff on here. That looks pretty good. Now I'll go ahead and turn it over and uh, take out the camshaft so that we can uh, remove the valves and replace the valve stems. And of course it's super important when you're taking taking these uh, rocker arms off to not just loosen the screw completely but to go with several passes because obviously the camshaft is pressing down on some of these valves and if you just unscrewed them all the way it would probably bend these uh, these rocker arm thingies, whatever these things are called that hold all the rocker arms on. 
off the intake rocker rocker arms. And the exhaust rocker arms. I'll take a look real quick. It looks like yeah, it's all in really good good shape. It looks like all of the uh, floats are in good shape. And of course, keep these in the same order. You don't want to get the order changed around. And we'll go ahead and take the camshaft out as well. And this all looks like it's in good shape. I don't see any scoring or anything, any signs of worry. Next, we'll go get the uh, valve tool. We'll compress these valve stems. We'll take out the retaining clips and change the uh, valve stem seals. All right, so I got this handy dandy valve compressor tool. We'll see if we can get this thing working so we can squish down these uh, valves and take the uh, retaining clips out. The idea is this squishes down on the valve and then we can take the connecting the retaining clips out. Line it up with the valve on the bottom, center it on the spring uh, seal on the top, squeeze the tool in place, and then I'll rotate the threaded screw on the bottom here until, until the retaining clips become visible, and then use a magnet tool Take out the retaining clips and unclip. So now we can pull the spring off and push the valve down out of the bottom of the motor. One valve. Then we'll use our valve stem puller tool. So grab on there, pull off the valve stem seal. So I'm going to rig up some kind of a storage device so I can store all the valves, their springs, their hats, and their connecting, their retaining clips all, all together in, without mixing up the order of those. All right, so I rigged up 16 containers, one for each valve. Right, that's all the intake valves. Now we'll move over and do the exhaust valves next. All right, so I got all the valves out. Eight intake, eight exhaust. Here's the head with all the valves out. So I'll go through and just clean this up real good. And we'll take out the remaining valve stem seals. Because we're going to be replacing these with brand new ones. I was able to polish the intake valves pretty easily with a brass brush, but the exhaust valves have a lot of carbon, so I'm going to use a steel wire wheel to polish them and get all the carbon off. And by doing so, I can uh, take this dirty carbon-coated valve and make it look nice and clean, like the one in my right hand, which I've already polished. And of course, I'm avoiding the uh, valve stem, which is coming in contact with the stem seal. And a quick and dirty trick for those who don't have their own home machine shops. I'm putting the valve into this drill here, and that allows me to rotate it to ensure that I don't have any spots where I'm working on the piece longer than another spot. Keep it nice and round. And the valve is much harder than the wire wheel, so we can uh, clean up the valve real good using this method. It basically burns through the carbon without really affecting the valve metal itself at all. You can actually see the carbon underneath turning white as I'm scraping through it and then the bare metal underneath is exposed. So 
So this method works really well. This is before. There's a little bit of carbon on here. This is after. Looks like a brand new valve. Okay, the cylinder head is softer metal, of course. So I'm going to use a brass wheel and just really gently come in here and clean this. Okay, there's just a few little bits left. I'll get this brass brush in there and that should scrape the last little bits off nice and gentle on an aluminum surface. So what we'll do next to ensure that everything's seated nice and good, I'm going to put a little bit of a valve grinding compound, valve lapping compound. Put it back in. And then just uh, grind just a little bit to make sure that we got a good seal here. The mini engine has automatic hydraulic uh, valve lash adjustment. Basically, oil pressure fills in a space between the rocker arm and the, uh, the little metal bit that pushes down on the valve. So there's no adjustment screws or shims that need replacing or, or adjusting. For the exhaust valves, I found out that rather than using this little lapping tool, which for some reason can't stick to the valves very well, I can attach the valves to my drill driver here. And then very carefully I can basically do the same thing as the tool but easier. I couldn't do this on the intake side because the spark plug tubes are in the way but on the exhaust side that really gives me a nice good seal so what I'll do is I'll clean the intake and the exhaust ports here and then I'll, uh, I'll probably take the, this head outside and wash it down with some soap and water to make sure we got all the valve lapping compound out. Then I'll blow it out with some compressed air and uh, start putting it back together. Alright, so it's time to put the valves back in as well as the valve stems, seals. So these seals go over like this. But what I want to do first is put the uh, valve into the, into the head. And then there's this little plastic cap here, and the idea is you put this over the top of the valve so that the rib surface on the tip of the valve doesn't uh, damage the seal. Then you slide it on down like this. Then you use your handy dandy valve stem seal tool to press it on the rest of the way. And then take the little red cap off. Now we go grab the spring and the spring seat, uh, get our valve compressor tool, compress this down, then we'll grab our little retaining clips and uh, coax these back into place. I can tell already this is going to be very time consuming. Once you got the clips lined up, just uh, release the spring and it's back in there. I found that putting a little bit of assembly lube on here on each of these uh, retaining clips helps the clip to stick to the valve stem so it's not flopping around and falling off every time I go to readjust something. And the last one. And I've gotten better as I've gone along.
there, that one went super fast compared to the first one. We've got the valve train reinstalled, so now we can go ahead and uh, put the camshaft back on. And again, I'll put some assembly lube in here. Just on the initial startup, because there's going to be absolutely no oil in this engine. I'll grab the sprocket and this fancy tool just to make sure we've got it lined up as close as reasonable back to top dead center. There we go. Put all these back on. Go ahead and put the rocker arms back on. And we'll do the same for the exhaust. So we'll start from the inside and work our way out. The tightening torque for these bolts is 22 foot-pounds. All right, we're ready to put the cylinder head back onto the new motor. I'm going to just spray some brake and parts cleaner onto the engine here just to make sure it's completely grease free and I'll do the same to the bottom of the cylinder head because we don't want any grease interfering with the head gasket. Oh and a note, um, don't put anything on this gasket. Some people are talking about putting a Permatex copper RTV on this but this is a multi-layer sandwich modern gasket. It's already got a special coating on it. You don't want to put anything else on it that could uh, that could that's not really engineered for this obviously that doesn't fit going that way so we'll flip it over and that fits we'll grab the cylinder head line it up with the fancy dowels there we go okay so we got some brand new head bolts here and before putting them in you want to put a little bit of oil on the threads if you don't and if you install them dry you may not get a accurate torque reading when you go to torque them down. And torque values are important, but more important than torque values is even torque values across the entire surface of the block there. And don't forget these little 13 millimeter ones that go in the front of the engine in front of the timing chain. So I got a sheet here with the tightening sequence and the uh, torque values. So we start in the center, work our way out, and then do the, uh, I'm standing on the wrong side of the engine here. Here we go, that's better. So we start in the center, work our way out each side, and then lastly, do the uh, two 13mm uh, bolts at the front of the motor here. So the torque value is 30 foot-pounds, which seems kind of low, but then after you hit 30 foot-pounds, you go back and rotate each of them an additional 90 degrees. The torque value for the two front bolts at the timing chain are 21 foot-pounds and there is no additional 90 degree tightening sequence for those two front bolts. Alright, so we'll tighten these uh, according to the tightening sequence here to 30 foot-pounds. One, two, Switch to 13 millimeter for the last two. 11, 12. Then go back and tighten them an additional 90 degrees. Okay, that's that. Okay, next step is to put the timing chain back on. So first we put the guide rails back in. The second guide rail goes over the pin here. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll I'll uh I'll line up the top tooth here 
I'll kind of install it. And I'll use this tool here to make sure that it's uh, that top dead center here. And then I can see that I need to back up the crank by about three teeth here. A little bit more. Okay. And take it back off again. Make sure the teeth are lined up at the bottom. And I'll line the top up again. And we're good. We're lined up on the two bottom teeth here. And we're lined up on the top tooth. And we do have a torque specification for the camshaft bolt. It's 75 foot-pounds. There we go. Now we can reinstall the chain tensioner. All right. Next we'll hook, go ahead and get the valve cover gasket ready, uh, as well as the spark plug tube seals here. The new ones you can just hammer in with a block of wood. So first, get them started by hand. Oh, and make sure you put them in facing the right way. This is the right way. You can drive them in the rest of the way. The valve cover gasket is a nice compression fit. You just kind of squish it in and then visually check and make sure it's all nice and even all the way around. Just plop it back on there. And we'll finish tightening by hand, just good and snug. And we'll put the cam position sensor back in. All right, so, uh, I think we'll call that part two of this video. In part three, we'll continue putting the engine back together and then start the work for getting it into the car. So thanks for watching.